We make our triumphant return by taking a look at the equipment for the first edition Pathfinder Oracle. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, where I have been fervently, ardently, and absolutely hoping that nothing but goodwill, cheer, warmth, and wonderful times have been coming to you all over the course of this holiday season. All the myriad holidays that are being celebrated around this time of year, I hope it's been nothing but good times, or if at least not good times, that you've at least had some kind of reprieve from any hard times, difficulties, or hardships you may have been facing. I, I absolutely and most hopefully wish that for you. But you can see around here that things are looking a little bit different. Uh, also, an animal companion is looming in the background there, checking out my various miniatures and supping away at the paint water that my daughter and I had been making use of, you silly creature. Anyways, we have started moving things around and doing the difficult task of getting through my grandma's various items and belongings, getting them to her various children and family that wanted them. And that's allowed, afforded us some space to, to uh, move things around and make use of stuff. We're still figuring out what the layout's going to be around here, and we're going to play with things a bit, but I still wanted to get back to recording, get back to tackling things here on the Gamer's Den, and to do that, we need to wrap up the first edition Pathfinder Oracle, and today we're going to be digging into their equipment. But before we get into all of that, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or, if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes, then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide. But now, let's actually start talking about your equipment selection. We're going to start off with your weaponry. Just bear in mind that depending on your build, uh, your ancestry, whether you're a dwarf or elf or whatever else you may have selected, you may end up with some other proficiencies that work better than the baseline weapons that you have access to. But we're going to assume that it's just the baseline proficiencies your class provides for this particular build, which is going to be simple weapons, light armor, medium armor, and shields. Now, to start us off, we have the Humble Long Spear. Coming in at a meager five gold pieces, this weapon is going to deal 1d8 points of damage plus your strength modifier plus one half. So if you have a plus two strength, you're going to get to deal three points of damage off of that right there. This is also only going to crit on a roll of a 20, but when you do confirm, it has a times three damage multiplier. On top of that, you can brace it for extra damage against charging opponents, and it's a reach weapon, which will allow you to threaten a much larger area. Now, when it comes to actually making this a magic weapon, whether you're going with the, just the baseline enhancements from a plus one all the way up to a legendary plus five, that's going to do a significant amount for you in boosting your attack bonus and your damage output. Uh, but some other enhancements I might recommend you put down on your weapon would be alignment enhancements. Now these are going to count as a plus two enhancement bonus, but these will get you an extra 2d6 points of damage versus the opposed alignments and overcome damage reduction that might be in place. So if you're using a holy weapon against evil targets, that's going to get that extra 2d6 points of damage. So it's going to be incredibly effective for you. Now key this to whatever opposed alignments you're most frequently going up against. If you're in an evil campaign, then obviously you're going to want an evil enchanted weapon. Now, on top of this, in order to keep overcoming damage reduction, consider getting this weapon made out of cold iron or silver or mithril. Mithril would probably be the better choice overall over silver, but even still, these things will help to, again, overcome damage reduction and base this based off of the opponents that you're facing. 
The next enhancement that is always going to be useful for just about damn near every weapon is the speed enhancement. Counting as a plus three enhancement modifier on a full attack, gain an extra attack at your full base attack bonus. Now you're limited in attacks as it is, and this does come with a hefty cost to it, but getting an extra attack every chance you can make a full attack is going to be incredibly valuable to you, especially since that this is going to be at your full base attack bonus. And lastly, I would recommend something like the Keen Enchantment. Can counting as a plus one enhancement bonus, this expands the critical threat range of your weapon. So in this case, it goes from a 20 to being 19 to 20. It might seem like a small difference, but man, does it make a big difference, increasing the rate at which you threaten critical hits. Absolutely will help with your damage output overall. But then, something to consider for getting up close and personal would be the Morningstar. Costing just a tiny bit more at 8 gold pieces, this will do the same amount of damage at 1d8 plus your strength modifier. No strength and a half unless you actually two-hand the weapon. Also, uh, getting a critical on a 20 and times 2 for the crit. Some other enhancements that could be very well recommended here for either of these weapons, whether it's the Long Spear or the Morning Star, would be the Impact Enhancement. Counting as a plus two enhancement bonus, this weapon deals damage as if it were one size category larger. Now this also does have some other effects, but this is the most important part for us. Getting this to count as if it were one size category larger is significant. That really does a lot to boost your damage output and is incredibly valuable to you. Absolutely worth every last coin spent on it. And next, I would recommend Menacing, a plus one enhancement bonus. When next to a creature that is flanked, the flanking bonus on attack rolls goes up by two for all flanking allies, even if the wielder isn't one of the flankers. Now, given that you're able to use Summon Monster, and especially if you follow this guide and put this on your list, you can set up some pretty significant flanking bonuses. I mean, providing a plus four bonus to those summoned creatures or any other allies that are present is nothing to sneeze at. That's actually really huge. That's a great way for you to get in there and really support your allies as you start moving in close to start dealing with those pesky spellcasters that might be in your way. Now, moving on from there, we go on to your armor. Absolutely, probably the most important piece of equipment for you. What I would recommend getting as soon as possible would be the breastplate, although you're probably going to be starting off with something lighter, maybe a chain shirt. But as soon as you can, get a breastplate. This is going to cost you 200 gold pieces. This will give you a plus six bonus to your armor class, have a maximum dexterity bonus of plus three, and an armor class penalty of minus four, and your speed will be reduced by 20 feet. But we're not worried about a lot of that because you have all of your spells and revelations to help boost your abilities on the battlefield. However, you're still gonna wanna get one made out of mithril to reduce that armor class penalty as much as possible. And as far as enhancements go, aside from the usual plus one to plus five enhancement bonus, Bonus to get put on the armor, look at enchantments like Moderate Fortification. This counts as a plus three enhancement bonus, but gives you a 50% chance to negate critical hits and sneak attacks. You can go all the way up to the Greater Fortification Enhancement, which turns this to a 75% chance, but that's pretty expensive and having a 50-50 shot at reducing this anyways is going to be useful. To top it off, you're a spellcaster and have so many ways of boosting your, uh, your ability to avoid getting hit. Another one to consider though would be the buoyant enhancement. This is only going to cost you 2,000 uh, <laughs> 2,000 gold pieces, but it's going to be invaluable if your campaign is taking place near or on any significant bodies of water and swim checks are going to be frequent. This helps to remove a lot of penalties that could otherwise come your way. Similarly, look at the comfort enhancement. This will keep your armor clean and allows you to sleep in it like it were light armor, costing 5,000 gold pieces. One, this just reduces the need for any maintenance for any of those nitpicky DMs that might actually throw this at you. Two, 
This will let you stay safe and secure even in the most dire of terrain, circumstances, or enemy territory. This will allow you to be prepared all, at almost all times. And lastly, speaking of preparation, we have the, de the Determination Enchantment. Once a day, when at zero or fewer hit points, the item auto-casts Breath of Life on the, on the wearer, healing you for 5d8 plus 1 per caster level. This costs an incredible 30,000 gold pieces, but it's absolutely invaluable because inevitably, inevitably, it seems like that just when things couldn't get any worse, you finally get dropped. Despite your best efforts, the best efforts of your team, you have gotten dropped. Being able to just instantly snap back up to life and keep back on into the fight is going to be incredibly important. Absolutely worth it if you can find it or buy it. Now, the next item that I would recommend here is still a piece of equipment. It's still armor, but it's something that is definitely worth considering given your, given your class, and that's the Soothsayer's Raiment. This will cost you a pretty penny at 10,300 gold pieces. It's a suit of plus one chainmail. However, the most significant portion of this is that it grants one attuned oracle revelation if the character is of the appropriate mystery. If that revelation has already been chosen, gain plus one use per day for that revelation. That's huge. That's really great. I mean, that's an absolutely incredible. Now, your odds of running into the uh, Soothsayer's Raiment that has the exact mystery that you have picked out are pretty low, at least from a storytelling standpoint. But for all you DMs out there, at least put it in the same mystery as players if you decide to throw this as a piece of equipment out there. Just randomly roll on which uh, which revelation is provided. There's usually enough uh, variability in the effectiveness of the revelations that you can probably get them something that's a good, maybe not the best option, but still a good option. The other effect that this piece of armor has is that spells with percentage-based success, such as divination spells, gain a plus 5% chance of success. It's not bad. That's actually a nice little kicker there, a little cherry on top. But it's not the best part of this. And also, just bear in mind that chainmail is still going to be pretty reasonably effective for you as far as a piece of armor goes. Now, moving on from there, we get to the more diverse range of bits of equipment for you. And we've got some interesting ones in here. To start us off, we have the Belt of Stone Skin. Pretty expensive at 60,000 gold pieces. But you gain damage reduction at 10 unless it's an uh, adamantine weapon attacking you. And absorbs the first 100 points of damage each day. That's great. This uh, It is expensive, but this also cuts out the cost of having to... Uh, spend diamond dust in order to cast stone skin regularly and it's something that you can just have on yourself if you find this item then this is absolutely worth it for you especially since we are going with an anti-caster build that is going to be wading into the thick of melee even if you're going to be using your abilities to try to get around and through much of the threats the next item i could i would recommend for you are the mnemonic vestments Coming in at 5,000 gold pieces, if you're a spontaneous spellcaster, you are, cast a spell from a written source that's on your list and are able to decipher. So this will let you use a lot of different kinds of scrolls and really help to enhance your spellcasting ability throughout the day. Absolutely worth its weight in gold. Great to have. Highly recommend it. The next item, that's actually a pretty good one, is the Inquisitor's Monocle. Hope I said that. Inquisitor's Monocle. Coming in at 6,800 gold pieces, you gain a plus 5 competence bonus to Sense Motive and can cast Zone of Truth two times per day. Now, this is great for a lot of the role playing situations, and given that you're a face, this can be a great way for you to really boost your effectiveness in those role play social encounter kind of situations something i definitely recommend you get even if it's not going to be the most life or death thing this can still do a lot to enhance your ability to succeed in role playing encounters but of course we still have more things for you why wouldn't we we come on come around to the next item that is great for a lot of different spell casters that's the metamagic if i could speak metamagic rod extend 
5,500 gold pieces will net you this handy item. Up to three spells durations are doubled. Doesn't apply to instant concentration or permanent spells, but having this to boost all of those different buffs that you might be throwing out there or debuffs are going to be incredibly handy. Having those doubled is fantastic. Really helps you get more mileage out of your spells without having to keep expending those precious, precious spell slots. Then we have the Handy Haversack, a classic item, one that's great for any adventurer. 2,000 gold pieces will get you this useful item. The central pouch holds up to 80 pounds of material. The side pouches hold 20 pounds. And any item you reach for in the pack is automatically on top and doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity to draw out. However, it will still require a move action. So that's a bit of damage negation right there. That's great. Absolutely. Absolutely wonderful to have and the fact that you can carry just such a mind-boggling amount of materials with it is great then the next series of items are going to be good for a lot of different adventures they're classic items as well we start off with the cloak of resistance coming in anywhere between 1,000 gold pieces to a hefty 25,000 this will get you a plus one to plus five resistance bonus to fortitude reflex and will saves and getting a boost to your fortitude and reflex saves is going to be important since those are some of your weaker saves definitely good to have then we also have the Ring of Protection, coming in anywhere from 2,000 to a whopping 50,000 gold pieces. This will give you a plus one to plus five deflection bonus to AC, your armor class, and this counts towards your touch armor class. This is just a classic item, it's good no matter who has it, but given that you're a squishy, soft, pliable little spellcaster, even if you're maybe a little bit more buff than the wizard is, you're still going to want this. This is going to be incredibly helpful for you. The next item is something you absolutely need. It's the Headband of Alluring Charisma. If nothing, if you pick up nothing else on this list, get this. Coming in at 4,000, 16,000, or 36,000 gold pieces, this gives a plus two, plus four, or plus six bonus to your charisma. That boosts your spell casting. Your extra, it gives you extra spells per day. It increases the spell save DCs. This is amazing to have. On top of that, this will boost all your various face skills as well. And uh, if you happen to pick up the Scion of War feat and get the option that lets you substitute your charisma for your uh, uh, for your uh, dexterity score towards your initiative, this will help to boost your initiative significantly as well. Definitely great to have. But of course, there are so many more items out there. So, so many. You have the different, uh, you have the different little token items like the Featherfall token or the one that sprouts up gigantic, enormous trees. You have the various Ayun stones that give other bonuses. And there's so many great and incredible items that just haven't been listed here. We didn't even bring up the subject of shields, saying that having a shield in place will be greatly handy for you. Another little boost to your armor class, as well as being able to have it enchanted and give you an enhancement bonus towards your armor class, making you that much harder to hit. The drawback would be is that unless you're using a buckler, you're not going to be able to use a long spear or any other kind of reach weapon that you might have access to. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Did you like today's video? Did you dislike it? What other items might you recommend for the Pathfinder Oracle, particularly first edition Pathfinder Oracle? So bear all that in mind. So go, either way, let me know in the comments down below uh, your thoughts and we'll engage in discussion down below. Also remember to hit those like or dislike buttons and remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamers Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. I'm glad to be back. Thank you all so much for your time and you all have yourselves a good night.